Welcome to the new and improved shift headquarters. Okay, folks, before we get into today's video, I just want to let people know what's been going on with the channel. Yes, I know it's been a long time since we've posted anything, and I do apologize for that, but we've been so busy with other things going on in our lives that this kind of had to take a little bit of a back burner. Um, Jacob's gone back to school. He's working full time. I've been working full time, not to mention that I've moved halfway across the country to Oklahoma. Jacob's still in California. You know, it's things are conflicting that that we really didn't want to be conflicting but we've got some ideas in the works we've been talking with each other and we're hoping that you're really going to enjoy what it is that we got up our sleeves but without further ado let's get into the review of the 2024 escape and i say review it's actually me just talking a bunch of trash on my wife's car so it should be a good one let's get to it The 2020 Ford Escape really isn't a bad car, if you don't have taste in cars. It has an EcoBoost 3-cylinder turbo engine, which sounds like a diesel. Take a listen. to that three-cylinder engine is an eight-speed automatic that's never in the right gear. It's constantly bogging down unless you put it in sport mode. And even then, it's not there. It's not very interesting to look at either. In fact, it looks just like every other subcompact SUV on the planet. There's a lot of styling cues that you'll see in these cars that I'm showing you now that you'll also recognize on Ford. And that's not exactly Ford's problem, that, that they're all doing it. They're all making them look the same, and I don't know why. It's just drab, dreary, and vanilla, and it's just bleh. Yeah, so what does the Escape drive like? Well, have you ever driven a car? Because that's what it drives like, a, a car. And that's the best I could put it. In other words, it's boring. The interior is kind of misaligned and it's just, things are in weird places like the start stop switch is here and it's, I'm, I hit my wrist on the steering wheel every time I try and go and push that button. So I gotta give it this secret handshake before I can start it. Um, the screen gets really, really hot. I mean, really hot. So hot that you don't wanna touch it. And they could have been nice and given you some more steering wheel controls to operate the screen, but they didn't. And the fact that it's just protruding from the dashboard, it just seems like it was an afterthought when they put it in. And somebody was having a meeting somewhere and they just decided, oh crap, we forgot to put a screen in this thing. Where should we stick it? You know what? Ah, give me the liquid nails and a staple gun. I'll put it right there. This is a neat little feature that when you come up to a stop sign, and you press your foot on the brakes, you can take your foot off the brakes and then the car will still be stopped. It'll sit there. Now, that works awesome unless the auto start stop feature is engaged because what happens with the auto start stop feature is when you come to a stop, the engine will shut itself off. And if you have the brakes holding, if you have the auto stop brakes holding the car, the engine won't kick on until you press the gas again. It won't start the engine until you press the gas. So when you go to press the gas and it finally starts the engine, your brain has thought, hang on, there's something wrong, the car's not going. So you push the gas a little bit harder and then you take off like a stabbed rat. It's, it's kind of dumb. So we, I just turned the auto start stop feature off, which there's a little sequence I have to do when I start this car anyway. So the starting procedure that I have to do here, okay. First things first, we're in the car, seatbelts on, that's, you know, all fine and standard equipment. So I have to put my foot on the brake, do the secret handshake to get to the starting button. Once I've started the car, good. Now I need to make sure that the lane departure warning system is off, which it is. 
Then I have to turn the auto start stop feature off because I hate it, it drives me nuts. And then I turn the auto hold feature off too. My wife likes it, she's used to it, but I'm not used to it, so I turn that off. Then I undo the parking brake. Then I can put it in drive. Then I can go. Whereas in my Ranger, it's as simple as get in, turn the key, put it in drive, go. Simple as that. Why, why did it have to be so freaking complicated? Oh, and then uh, also adding to that starting procedure, if my wife has driven it before me, I need to make sure the seat heater's off too, or else I burn the hairs right off of my anus. road noise yeah the suspension is noisy on this sucker this car has a lane departure warning system and it also has an active lane departure assist so if you are veering out of your lane because you're well let's face it you're not paying attention which you should be doing while driving it will physically bring you back into the lane that you should be in it also has a collision mitigation system. So if you're coming up on a car and you're not paying attention and you're not stopping, the car will take it upon itself to stop itself. Two really great features that shouldn't be in a car because you should be paying attention while driving. And the only reason you would need them is because, well, like I said, you're not paying attention. However, this has also a radar guided cruise control so you can set your speed to say 70 mile an hour then if you are approaching the car in the lane that you are in it will go all the way up to that car and do the same exact speed that car is doing if it's going slower than you are which is all fine and dandy until you decide to go switch lanes to get around this guy and here's why you can on the turn signals just tap it and it'll blink three times and you can make your lane change then if you hold it it will obviously stay on but it's also got this blind spot assist system which never really knows where the car is you can't tell it doesn't know it could be a hundred feet behind you it could be right next to you so you could tap the turn signal to make your way over to pass that car, get about halfway in, realize that car is right there, then your turn signal stops, then the lane departure system thinks you're trying to go into the other lane inadvertently, then it'll rip you back into the lane you were going into, then it sees that you're approaching the car in front of you that you're trying to pass too quickly, and it'll slam on the brakes. Fun. Yeah, that radar guided cruise control is kind of neat. It's this black thing up here in the windshield that controls all of that. The only thing I don't like about the radar guided cruise control is it will not tell me how fast the vehicle in front of me is going until I'm going the same exact speed. Then I know how fast that car is going. Because if I'm approaching that car and I want to do 75 and that car is doing 65, if I could see when the radar detects how fast that car is going, if it would tell me how fast that car was going, then I could just easily change lanes, get around them, and I wouldn't have to slow down. But no, that would make sense. It has electric power steering, which, I mean, on a normal everyday car, it's fine, but I don't like electric power steering because it makes, it makes the car feel vague. I can't tell if the steering wheel is actually connected to the front wheels or not. And here, even with the slight breeze that we're having today, the, the car is all over the lane. I mean all over the lane. I can't keep it straight for the life of me. Even when there is no breeze, it's, it's kind of difficult to keep the car in a straight line on the highway. All thanks to that electric power steering. It's very twitchy. It could be a calm day, not a single piece of wind in the air at all, and a mouse could fart on the other side of the highway and it's gonna throw me into the lake next to me. Please get
give me my 2008 Ranger with manual windows and manual locks and no cruise control and no infotainment system and, and no freaking lane departure warning or adaptive cruise control or blind spot detection system. Please give me that over this any day. Why? Because I'm in control. I am in complete control of that truck, whereas I don't feel like I am in complete control of this car. I hate this car.